Hello, and welcome to the correspondence on Voice of America. I'm Milar Sega in Washington. We begin with election news, not in Washington, but about 9,000 kilometers further east. Chechnya's longtime Kremlin appointed leader, Ramzan Kadyrov, directly elected for the first time earlier this month by a whopping 98% of the voters. The conspicuously high figures were expected, given that Kadyrov's iron fisted rule tolerates very little opposition. Here's VOA's Daniel Sheriff with more. More a celebration than an exercise in democracy, as Chechen voters for the first time elected strongman Ramzan Kadyrov. The landslide win was predictable, as Kadyrov has ruled Chechnya for a decade, appointed by Russian President Vladimir Putin with almost total control. Kadyrov is seen by supporters as bringing peace and development after two failed wars for independence, while critics say he has become a cult of personality. A rebel like his father, they switch sides to join Putin, who spent billions to rebuild Chechnya and prop up Kadyrov, who in return cracked down on militants and critics. Political parties opposed to Kadyrov did not even campaign in Chechnya out of fear their supporters would be persecuted. We keep working in the regions. What motivates this? This is our republic. We were born here. We can't be indifferent to what is happening. And to discuss what this election means for Chechnya and its citizens, I'm joined on Skype from Moscow by Moscow correspondent Daniel Sheriff, who filed that report for us. So, Daniel, uh, listening to your piece, the opposition member that you spoke with there, uh, Duduev, says his country can't afford to be indifferent to what's going on. But based on these election results, it doesn't seem to be a lot of desire, or uh, among Chechens at least, to, to rock the vote, 98 percent. Well, if we take those uh, figures at face value, and that's a big if, um, the, the election uh, commission was, you know, uh, more or less completely under the control of the local authorities inside Chechnya. And in, uh, if we look at past parliamentary elections, uh, they've had some very questionable figures, even uh, having a higher turnout than the actual number of, of voters. So uh, very questionable figures. Uh, but if we, if we look at it, uh, you know, uh, in general, though, Okay, we seem to have lost uh, Daniel Sheriff's connection there. We're, we're going to try to get him back online for us. But uh, Kadyrov seems to have a very strong following in Chechnya. I hope to get uh, uh, Daniel Sheriff to talk to us about that. In the meantime, uh, as you know, uh, Ramzan Kadyrov elected uh, just uh, earlier this month by a margin of 98% in the country of Chechen. Um, obviously, what we know is that Kadyrov is obviously a very strong Putin ally, uh, having been installed there 10 years ago by the man himself. So what can we tell you about Chechen right now? I wish we had Daniel Sheriff to talk to us about this. We have him, we have him on you phone now. Oh, OK, I'm so glad we got reconnected, Daniel, because I think you know so much more about what's going on in Chechen than I do. Okay, so um, Kadyrov obviously has a very strong following there in Chechnya. You, said, you mentioned that there was this cult of personality that had developed around him. What can you tell us about this man, Kadyrov? Uh, well, uh, he, uh, he took over um, after, uh, um, uh, some years after his, uh, his father had been uh, uh, assassinated in 2004. Uh, he's been in power for... Uh, nearly a decade now. Um, he's able to bring a lot of money into Chechnya. Uh, he's got very close relations with Russian President Vladimir Putin, and that al allows him to get the kind of support that uh, can uh, rebuild uh, large parts of, of Chechnya. So certainly there is a, uh, a large chunk of the population that does uh, support him because they see him as having brought stability to a large degree, mm -hmm. brought uh, peace after these two terrible wars, uh, and bringing in a lot of money and, and to some degree, uh, you know, quite a bit of autonomy in terms of their uh, able uh, to self-govern. Uh, he runs uh, Chechnya, uh, according to rights groups, as more or less his own kingdom with very little interference from federal authorities, uh, but also uh, not uh, following along all the time with uh, Russian federal laws. Um, big uh, rights crackdown leading up to the election. Uh, there was a report by Human Rights Watch saying how uh, you know, there, were, uh, there was a lot of pressure, uh, not only on 
the opposition groups, but, uh, but also on any uh, outspoken critics of Kadyrov. So in, in order to impose that kind of, of, of authority, uh, a lot of his critics say that uh, Kadyrov is just another old-fashioned dictator. So, so how do you account for his popularity there uh, among Chechens? Well, he is able to bring in a lot of money. Uh, he's able to uh, he's been able to to build up uh, the, the the main city, uh, the capital Graz. Uh, he's uh, he's been able to uh, attract some investment, um, and that's uh, you know a big change from the decades of war that uh, that had been the norm in Chechnya for mm-hmm. such a long time. Uh, so there is uh, a large degree of. Uh, Peace and stability, at least on the surface, uh, and as long as you don't uh, cross Kadyrov or uh, or you know, the people that are in power in in Chechnya, uh, you can uh, lead more or less a normal life. Um, so it's uh, it's it's a matter of stability. Uh, but the people of Chechnya, as one uh, analyst here at Moscow told me, have paid a, a fairly large price for that stability in terms of individual rights. Is that Daniel? How he's managed to keep Islamic uh, insurgents in check? There haven't been uh, very many uh, attacks there, I believe, since 2014. Are are, are those Islamic insurgents still active there, uh, or has he essentially strong-armed them out of existence uh, in in Chechnya? Uh, well, there uh, there have been, uh, as you mentioned, uh, occasional attacks. Um, the last one, I believe, was December 2014, where mm-hmm. we had a suicide bomber uh, in Grozny outside of a concert hall. Um, there was about uh, five police officers were killed, and a number of people were injured in that. Um, so certainly, uh, the insurgency has not been wiped out completely, uh, but we do see a decreasing amount of casualties among the security forces. Uh, so certainly, uh, there, he has made a big impact on uh, taking that insurgency apart, uh, lessening the the amount of fighting that's going on. Um, but in in uh, the methods that he uses to do that are are quite controversial, and of course, he gets a lot of criticism for them, uh, including uh, collective punishment for relatives of insurgents. Uh, he received some rare criticism uh, from uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin at one of his press conferences when he was asked right. uh, about the Kadyrov's uh, burning down of uh, the homes of relatives of insurgents as retribution uh, for, for their having uh, relatives who were involved in insurgents here and accused of being uh, militants. And President Putin uh, had some mild criticism, basically saying that that was inappropriate. Um, so certainly there's been uh, there's been some uh, some criticism of, of his methods and, and uh, according to rights groups, rightfully so. But isn't it also true, Daniel, that uh, that many of those Islamic insurgents ended up uh, traveling to Syria to fight with Islamic State? Isn't that what happened? Well, this is one of the big concerns that uh, we have now uh, in Russia. Uh, there have been hundreds of uh, Russian citizens from the Caucasus, including Chechnya, uh, according to Russian officials, who have gone to Syria to, to fight with uh, uh, rebels and terrorist groups there, including Islamic State. Uh, and the uh, big concern is that uh, they may come back uh, to Russia and bring some of that ideology, some of that fight uh, back with them. So certainly, uh, if there are uh, a large group of people who have been uh, uh, disaffected, who don't like the way Kadyrov is running Chechnya, they don't like the, the way he, uh, he has more or less total control over the republic, uh, they would be fairly susceptible to uh, terrorist recruitment. And certainly there's a lot of concern that there could be uh, attacks that may happen uh, here in Russia as a result of so many Russian citizens fighting with uh, terrorist groups inside Syria. Well, thanks for all that information, uh, and thanks for manning the fort all by yourself, Daniel Sheriff in Moscow. Time now for a short break. Daniel is back in our second segment as authorities conclude a two-year investigation into the downing of Malaysian passenger jet MH17 over eastern Ukraine. This is The Correspondence on Voice of America.